Hello everyone, in this video I'll give you a short tutorial about how to enable SSH on your end devices. Before we enable it, we'll just go through some basics about SSH. SSH is a protocol which use transport layer protocol TCP works on port 22. SSH is basically used to secure your communication between two end devices so we use SSH to connect to our remote devices for command line interface we have another protocol like SSH which is Telnet problem with Telnet is your communication is insecure because every packet in Telnet is in plain text it's not encrypted whereas in case of SSH your all packets are encrypted we use SSH for other purposes as well, like file transfer services with FTP. Then you have SCP protocol, which again we use SSH for encryption purpose. So various other uses. Now, before we enable SSH on our end device, which can be a router, switch, access point, or any other device which runs Cisco iOS operating system. There are a few prerequisites to enable SSH. First thing is you have to configure a host name for that device. So you have to change your router or switch default host name from router switch to anything else. Second thing is you have to configure a domain name. This domain name is basically used by a crypto key to generate a key basically. Third thing is to generate a crypto key which is used to encrypt your packets. Now when you generate an crypto key, it asks you for your key length, for how long your key length is in bits. So if you want to use SSH version 2 or higher, you have to use key length minimum of 768 bits. If you use a key length less than 768 bits, let's take 512 bits, you won't be able to use SSH version 2. You have to use SSH version 1. Now I have a Cisco router running Cisco IS 12 dot something. So we'll see how to enable SSH on that router. So first thing we have to do is we have to change the host name. So in global configuration mode, we use command host name and then specify what name you want to use. Second thing you have to do is configure a domain name. So we use command IP domain name and then whatever domain you want to use. Generally in production environment you use your organization domain name. Third is to generate a crypto key. So we use command crypto key generate RSA which is our algorithm and then it will ask you what key size you want to use so we'll say that the key size you want to use is 1024 so that we can use ssh version 2 and then fourth step is to enable ssh so ip ssh version 2 basically says that you want to use ssh version 2 for your device so now we'll execute these on a cisco router so that's my Cisco router with a default name router so we want to make a configuration change so we have to be in global configuration mode now first thing I'll do is I'll change this router host name so host name Melbourne Cure 1 configure a domain name IP domain name let's take my own domain so kunshama.in Third step is to create a cryptographic key for encryption. So, crypto generate sorry, it's crypto key generate RSA and then key length. So by default, it take is 512 bits. So we'll take 1024 so that we can use SSH version two and it generates a 24-bit RSA key next is to enable SSH, use SSH version 2 so IP SSH version 2 now your IP SSH version 2 is enabled to be used and you can use SSH to connect to this device but when you use SSH it asks you for authentication 
and in authentication and ask you for a username and password so if you do not have any username and password you have to create a username and password on this device to enable you to connect via SSH so to create username and password we use username command so username name of the user and then it's an optional you can set its privilege level so I'm setting a privilege level 15 means administrator and then secret and my password so I have two options I can either use secret or password password is clear text secret is md5 hash right so I create a username and password then I go to my remote access lines which is my VTY lines so line VTY 04 and then I configure command login local login local means if someone connects via remote access VTY lines authenticate using username and password and using local database local database is running configuration now if you want that to your device you should be able to connect only via SSH what you can do is you can give this command transport input SSH what this will do is this will allow only SSH connections to this device over video lines so on remote access you get only SSH so if you try to connect via telnet you won't be able to so let's implement this on our router so now I have this device router enabled with SSH I'll create a username and password so username second privilege level 15 secret password so that it shows stores an md5 hash instead of clear text password next is line vty 024 i set that authenticate anyone connecting via remote using local database now what we'll do is from ssh we'll try to connect to this device uh, to show ip interface brief to see what is the ip address of this device so it's 172.31.43.80 so i'll use my remote connection device party to connect so 172.31.43.80 over ssh protocol default port number 22 so it asked me for a password username and password for authentication and there we go so now I'm inside my device now you can observe that it has gone directly to enable mode it's because we have not set any enable password if we have set any enable password it would have gone to our user mode right now we'll exit now what we'll do is we'll try telnet also before disabling telnet so Party client 172.31.43.80 and we'll use telnet so it asked for username password and I'm inside my device that means it is allowing telnet connections as well now what we'll do is we'll disable telnet and allow only SSH to do that what we'll do is we'll give command transport input SSH Oh, sorry it's transport input SSH that means allow only SSH connection via remote now let's try it so 172 31 43 80 over telnet so you can see when you tried connecting via telnet it then allowed it cancel aborted your connection now let's try using SSH So it allows your connection via SSH. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps you understanding basics about SSH and how to enable SSH on your Cisco iOS devices. If you want to read more technical and non-technical articles, you can visit my website sakunshama.in. If you want to see more network related videos, you can visit my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this video. Have a good day.